Hi, this is Sean. Welcome to Guitar Basics 101. Today I'm going to be taking you through everything you need to know about getting started on acoustic or electric guitar. This is going to be really fun. A couple of things you're going to need before we get started. You're going to need a tuner. This is a clip-on tuner. You're going to need a metronome and of course your guitar. Now if you don't have a clip-on tuner or a metronome, there's plenty of apps out there that work great and they're free. When we get to that part of the lesson, I'll discuss the ones I think you should get. I created a PDF for today's lesson. If you click the link below, it'll take you to my website. There you can download the PDF. I think you'll find it really helpful and it'll make it really easy to follow this video. Topics covered in today's lesson are going to include guitar general mechanics, guitar setup, functions of both the acoustic and electric guitar. Then we're going to learn how to hold a guitar pick. We're going to learn a little bit about guitar picks. We're not going to get into playing with our fingers. Once we can do that, we're going to learn how to tune the guitar. So we're going to tune the guitar using both a clip-on tuner and an app. Then we're going to learn how to have proper posture and hand position so you don't develop bad habits. Once we can do all, do, do all this, we're going to learn our first four chords. We're going to learn an E minor chord, E major chord, D chord, and an A chord. Once we've memorized these chords and we know where to put our fingers, then we're going to learn how to read chord grids. After the chord grids, we're going to learn how to put these chords we've learned into a chord progression, and the chord progression is going to correspond to a song. A chord progression is just like a sequence of chords moving in a loop. After we can play the chord progression, we're going to learn a little bit about timing. We're going to learn how to use a metronome, going to learn how to count and we're going to learn some fundamental basics about uh, music theory and rhythm as it relates to timing. Then we're going to learn how to play a song. It's going to be really fun. It's a great song. It's a song everyone knows. It's a classic. And once we're finished learning the song, the last thing we're going to do is we're going to follow it up with, you know, how do you practice? How long do you practice? We're going to set up a practice routine. I'm going to tell you what you should practice, how you should practice, and what you can expect to get out of your practice time, as well as you know some of the other things that go with playing guitar. You're going to probably get some calluses. Uh, some of these things are totally normal. So if you like what you see in this video, please subscribe, click the link below, and let's do this. General mechanics, functions, and setup for the guitar. Now, hands down in all these categories, the most important thing when you get a guitar is that you know it's been set up. What is a setup? It's an adjustment for a guitar so you know that it plays as well as it can and that it sounds as good as it possibly can. So if someone gave you a guitar, even if you bought a guitar new, you want to make sure it's set up. So how do you know that? You bring it to your local guitar shop, you have them look at the guitar and they'll be able to assess whether or not it needs a setup. It might not need a setup. But when you're starting, the last thing you need is a guitar that's going to be difficult to play. And with a lot of guitars, if they're not set up, they can be really difficult to play. The telltale sign is the distance from the string to the frets. And here's the neck of the guitar. So if you go to press your fingers down onto the strings of the guitar where they meet the frets and you press down and it's really hard, that probably means that the guitar needs a setup. But there's many other factors that are involved, but I highly recommend it just taking it to your local shop. They'll take a look at it and they'll tell you whether or not it needs to be set up. So setup is number one. Now you have a guitar that's functional, plays good, sounds good. Okay, general mechanics and functions of the guitar. Here's your standard acoustic guitar. Okay, there's the body. As you can see, there's a sound hole. It's hollow. Okay, here's a pick guard. This is the bridge, saddle. Um, we have our neck. In the neck, you can see the metal things going through the neck. Those are called our frets. This is the nut. This is the truss rod cover. There's a metal rod that goes through the neck of the guitar. They use that to adjust it when they do the setup. This is the headstock. Here is our tuning pegs. This is what we use to tune the guitar. So when you go and make sure the guitar is in tune, you turn the tuning pegs. And that's pretty much it with the acoustic guitar. Pretty simple. It's a 
Guild D55, beautiful guitar. Now, we are going to move on to the electric guitar. Now, the electric guitar is a little different in that it is a solid piece of wood. The acoustic is hollow, so the sound comes through the sound hole. With the electric guitar, the sound comes through the pickups. Those are the things that are mounted inside the guitar. You see the silver thing here? There's my, it's my neck pickup, and then this is called my bridge pickup here. So what you do for electric guitar is you plug it in. Here's an instrument cable. Plug it into the amplifier. Turn on the amplifier. Another very viable solution if you don't have a guitar amplifier is a digital audio workstation. You basically plug your guitar into a connection that goes to your computer. And then if you have an Apple computer, you have GarageBand already built in. If you have a PC, there's plenty of alternatives that work really well. And actually right now, as I'm discussing this, it's recording into my digital audio workstation. This is the microphone. So that would be another option um, when you're buying guitar, you're learning how to play. If you don't have an amplifier right away, you can always look into that as being a solution for electric guitar. And then you're gonna have a couple of controls. Now, all guitars look different, but they generally have the same function. So you're gonna have a volume control and you're gonna have a tone control. So if you plug in the guitar, plug it into the amp and you don't hear anything, it's probably because the volume is down. So if I bring this volume up, all of a sudden I have sound. So here is my volume control right here on the Telecaster. That's the first one, first knob that you see. Then we also have a tone control. Tone changes the sound of the guitar. So if I bring this all the way up, it's gonna sound like a lot twangier. As I turn the tone down, it's gonna change the overall sound of the guitar. Make it a little darker as you turn it down. So those are the controls for electric dirty pots. I need to have this thing set up. In any case, um, so those are, that's the, we have our volume, we have our tone. Here is our pickup selector. So most guitars also have a pickup selector. The pickup selector is going to switch from one pickup to the next pickup. Right now, this is in the bridge position. That's for this pickup. If I move it in the middle, it's both pickups together. And if I move it all the way towards the pick guard, that is going to be my neck pickup, so I have three different sounds. And that's basically it, general function of the electric guitar. You plug it in, you have an amplifier, you have your uh, volume control, you have your tone control, and many of the things like the acoustic guitar are the same. Obviously the neck, here is the frets, tuning pegs, uh, obviously electric guitars a little bit heavier. And that is uh, acoustic and electric guitar in a nutshell. So either one is a great thing to start on. And the whole myth of you need to start on acoustic guitars, that's just false. In many ways, it's even better to start on electric guitar because it's a little bit easier to press the strings down. When you play acoustic guitar, you'll notice that the tension of the string to the fret is a little bit greater. So it's a little harder to press your fingers down onto the fret. So in some ways it's easier to start with electric guitar, but acoustic guitar is great as well. Okay, so using a guitar pick is the first, one of the first things that you're going to encounter when you start playing. There's a lot of different types of guitar picks as you can see from the picture there. I recommend you just going with a medium guitar pick, something like this. This is in the middle. You have guitar picks that are on the hard spectrum. This is a very hard guitar pick. So it's, very, it's not flexible at all. This is a much larger size guitar pick. This is a smaller guitar pick, but it's very firm, very hard. This is a very light guitar pick, great for strumming. So there's a lot of different choices. I'd, re I'd recommend picking up you know, some different ones, but in the beginning, going with something in the middle, I think is the way to go. Just a standard medium guitar pick. Here's your standard Fender medium guitar pick, something like this would be perfect. Now, holding the guitar pick. 
First thing you're going to do is you're going to make a fist like that. Then you're going to take the guitar pick and you're going to put it in like this. So the tip is, is perpendicular to your fingers and your thumb. So it should look like that. And you don't want to put it in too far. You want to put it in about halfway. So it should look something like this. Okay. Now, when you strum, one of the most important things is that you don't hold the guitar pick too hard. If you hold it really hard, you're not going to have any flexibility. And if you hold it, if you don't hold it hard enough, it's just going to fall out of your hand. So somewhere in the middle, holding it just tight enough so when you strum it, there's a little bit of flexibility there. So those are two of the first things you want to do. Now, when it comes to strumming, um, you don't always have to strum all the strings. It's more about rhythm. So if you strum down and you come up, it doesn't mean you have to strum everything. If you come up, you could just strum the top strings like that. That'll totally work fine. So when you start playing, you want to get out of the mindset that you're, you're doing this whole thing the whole time and trying to strike all the strings. I'm going to address that more when we get into the strumming patterns section of the guitar lesson. So that's holding a guitar pick. Now you can also use your fingers. But that would be for another lesson. A lot of people use your fingers. The way I'm teaching you how to hold a guitar pick here, and there are other ways, you can use these fingers. And that's hybrid picking. So I'd recommend holding a guitar pick like this. If you want to use your fingers, just put your two fingers together like this. You can strum like that if you don't have a guitar pick, and that should work fine. Before we get into tuning, we need to know the names of the strings, obviously. So we're going to go through all of the strings, starting with the lowest one first. This is the E string, this is the 6th string, this is the A string, my 5th string, D string is my 4th string, G string is my 3rd string, B string is my 2nd string, and high E string is my 1st string. So a silly little word association that makes it easy to remember the strings is every awesome dude goes bald, or if you want, broke, eventually. So every awesome dude goes broke eventually, or every awesome dude goes bald eventually. So those are the strings. Now, when you're going to tune a guitar, say somebody gave you a guitar you never played before, obviously, so you know, embarking on the tuning process can be somewhat intimidating. The best thing that you can do right out of the gate is just tune the strings down, loosen the strings. This way you're not going to go past the pitch and the strings aren't going to break. So this is a snark tuner here. This is a clip-on tuner. I'm going to turn this thing on so you can see it. Hopefully you'll be able to see it pretty good. There we go. Okay. So to give you an example, this should be an E. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to tune it down. Now, you don't want to loosen it so much the strings are falling off the guitar, but just so they're, you can see that they're relatively loose. You know that they're, they're pretty loose from where they started. And you should be good. So now I'm going to pluck in. As you can see, the tuner recognizes the pitch frequency. So now I'm tightening the string, and I'm going to bring it up to pitch. There's D, so we have to get up to E. And then there's the E right there. You see that and there we go so now the the E string is in tune so I would just go through the same process which each each of the strings and make sure that they're all in tune because no matter how great you're playing if the guitar is not in tune it's just not gonna sound good okay now we're gonna talk about an app you can use an app that I think is great it's called guitar tuna I'm gonna grab it it's on my iPad here it's on a music stand so you can see this app. This app is awesome. It's a really cool, really cool app. Turn on the iPad. Okay. And there it is. Okay, here's Guitar. So here's Guitar Tuna. Now, Guitar Tuna recognizes, also recognizes the pitch frequency of the string. And when you play the string, it's going to tell you whether to loosen or tighten the string. So I'm going to purposely just loosen it up a little bit. So now it's out of tune. Bring that 
volume up here we go. Okay, so this is telling us that we need to tighten the string. And the app literally tells you that it's too low or too high. And when it, when it reaches the pitch frequency it needs to be at, you hear that bell. Which means it's in tune. Let's try the A. The D. G. B. And high E. There we have it. So that's guitar tuna. Great alternative if you don't have a clip-on tuner. And that's tuning the guitar, the strings, and using the guitar pick. Posture and hand position are two of the most important things when you start playing guitar. So you don't develop any bad habits. Having the right technique is really, really important. So when you're sitting with the guitar, you want to try and sit up straight and have a straight line. In other words, your neck lines up with your back and you have a straight line like this and you sit up straight. For the hand position, now in the beginning there's no way around. You're going to be doing this, okay? I'm just telling you right now, you're going to be looking, trying to find chords and that's okay. But once you know how to play chords, it's good to try and keep your back straight and that way it's going to be easier to play for long periods of time. Now, hand position, this is really, really, really important. You do not want to play like that. <laughs> a lot of people start and they put their thumb like this and I see it all the time. You do not want to do this. Whenever possible, you want to hold the neck like this. So your wrist is perfectly straight. How you see my, my wrist is in a straight line here? Totally straight. Thumb up over the neck of the guitar. And a lot of books tell you that you should do this. And you know what? That's okay. For some chords, you know what? You're going to have to do that. But in the beginning, you definitely want to try and have a straight wrist and be able to play as many chords as you can with this type of hand position. Now we're going to learn our first four chords and a couple of really cool transition tricks that will make it easy to transition from one chord to the next chord first chord we're going to learn is an E minor chord. So for the E minor chord, I'm going to take my middle finger, this is my index, middle, ring, ring finger, and pinky. I'm going to take my middle finger and I'm going to put it on the second fret, first fret, second fret of the A string. So put it right there like this. Then I'm going to, after I do that, I'm going to take my ring finger and I'm going to put it on the second fret of the D string right underneath. So that should look like this. And I'm going to strum all the strings and it should sound like this. Here's your first E minor chord. Here's E minor. Now, to play an E major chord, all you have to do is take your index finger and put it on the first fret of the G string, the third string. And that's what an E chord sounds like. The next chord we're going to learn is going to be a D chord. To play the D chord, I'm going to take my index finger and I'm going to put it on the second fret of the G string. Then I'm going to take my middle finger and I'm going to put it on the second fret of the high E string. I'm going to come in a little closer here, right there like that. And then I'm going to take my ring finger and I'm going to put it on the third fret of the B string. So I have second fret G. 2nd fret high E, skipping that B string, and then ring finger on the 3rd fret of the B string. Now for this chord, I strum from the D string, so I strum from the 4th string. And that's the sound of a D chord. Now, the next chord we're going to play is going to be an A chord. Now, to play the A chord, what we're going to do is we're going to learn how to transition into it That'll make it a little easier to get there. So going to the A chord from the D chord, I'm going to take my middle finger off. Index finger is going to stay where it is. Slide my ring finger over to the second fret from the third fret. Now my second finger is going to come down onto the second fret of the D string, and I'm going to strum from the A string. There's my A chord. Okay, now that we know how to play those four chords, one of the most important things to learn when you begin playing guitar is how to read the chord grids. If you go online to Ultimate Guitar, there's an endless amount of songs and all of them 
you will see little chord grids at the top of the score. Same thing with any sheet music you buy or any book. So this next step is really important. Now chord grid is really just a rendering of the neck of the guitar, but in a vertical fashion. So if you look, if you look at the chord grid here, you'll see that's the E minor chord. This is the first chord that we learned. But if you look at the diagram, it has the guitar like this. So that is literally the rendering of the guitar the way it looks. So it's like a vertical diagram of the guitar neck. So as you can see, the lines that are vertical, straight up and down, those are strings. The lines that are, are going across are the frets. Those are the frets. Here's the nut. The symbol at the top of the chord grid is the name of the chord. The circles above the nut, those indicate open strings. And then at the bottom, there you could see numbers. The numbers correspond to your finger numbers. So the fingers would be index is one, middle is two, your uh, ring finger is three, and four is your pinky. So simple as that. So as you can see, E minor chord there, second finger, second fret on the A string, ring finger, second fret on the D string. And there we have our E minor chord. Now that we can play that, we're going to move on to the E major chord. So as you can see from this grid, all we have to do is add our index finger onto the first fret of the G string, which is the third string. That should sound like that. Now, we're going to go to the D chord. So for the D chord, we are going to look at the, you can see the E string, there's nothing on it. The A string, there's nothing on it. The D string is open. Index finger on the first, on the second fret of the G string. Ring finger on the third fret of the B string. And second finger on the second fret of the high E string. And you would strum this. You would look at your strings and you'd say, okay, where do I strum this from? It's my E, A, I would strum it from my D string. There's our D chord. Okay, now to go to the A chord. Here's the A chord right there. Okay. Now, I'm just going to slide my ring finger over, index finger stays, so I have open the, the E string, nothing on it, the A string is open, second finger on the second fret of the D, index finger on the second fret of the G, and ring finger on the second fret of the B. And we strum that from the fifth string and it sounds like that. And so then those would be our chord grids. So the, the song that we're going to learn, the progression is just going to have three of these chords. We're going to have an A chord. We're going to have a D chord. And we're going to have an E chord. Those are, those are, the, only, those are the only chords uh, in the song we're going to learn. So right now we're going to go to chord progressions. Now that you can read the chord grids and we will put these chords in the right order to play our songs. But before we do any of this, we need to learn how to read a basic chart, basic rhythmic chord chart. So if you look right over here, you'll see the chart and the lines that are going horizontal, that is known as the staff. Then right in front of that, you're gonna see a little symbol. That's gonna be called our treble clef. That gives us the range within where the lines are, where you see the notes. Then you're going to see the time signature. It says 4-4. Four, four. That means that for every measure, we're going to have a total of four beats. Now, in the staff, you see uh, vertical lines. Okay, Those are our bar lines. So in between those lines, that would be called a measure or bar. And within there is where we would count. Uh, we would count four beats. And so that's kind of our allocation of time right there. Then we would also have our tempo marker. That would be BPMs where you see the little 
symbol with the equal sign with the number, that's BPMs, that means beats per minute, and that gives us our how quick the song is going, the meter of the song, the time of the song. And then you see the little slashes within the measure, the, those are called, those are rhythmic notations, and those give us the type of strumming or the type of hits we're gonna do. Those are quarter notes there, but we'll get more into that later. Then at the end of the staff, you see two lines, uh, one that's solid and one that's a little bit thinner than that with two, two dots. That would be an end repeat at the end. And then at the very beginning, that would be a beginning repeat. So this is a basic chart layout. So when, I'm, when you're looking at the documents, you know they, they mean something, you, you understand what you're looking at. Then you see three little pound signs next to the treble clef. That would be the key the song is saying. That gives us the overall tonality of the chords that we're gonna be playing. So that's a basic breakdown of what a standard rhythmic chord chart looks like. We're not gonna to get too into that, but that's just a basic foundation for you. So when you look at it, you know what you're looking at. All right, now we're gonna do the chord progression for the song. The song we're gonna do is Three Little Birds by Bob Marley. This is an awesome song. If you haven't heard it, you probably have. Um, it's great because there's a lot of space in between the chords and the transitions are relatively easy. So, as you can see on the screen, we have an A chord and we're going to strum that two times. This is going to be the first part of the song where the vocals come in, and this will be the chorus. So I'm going to strum my A two times. Then I'm going to go to my D for one, then I'm going to come back to my A for one. And then I'm going to do that again. A for two, D for one, and A for one. Now I'm going to do the uh, verse of the song, which is going to be A to E. Back to A to D. Back to A, back to E, now we jump over to D, and then we come back to A, and that would be the verse of the song. So as you can tell, though, that's a little bit more challenging than the chorus, um, and that's one of the reasons I picked this song. You kind of get warmed up with the, uh, the chorus, and then you get into the verse. So one of the first things that you want to do is just memorize these chords and memorize the order in which the chords appear for both, both sections. And then we'll be ready to explore the timing. Okay, now that we have a handle on the chord progression, we know the order of the chords, we've memorized the chords. The next thing we're gonna discuss is rhythmic notation and some real basics about how whole notes, half notes, quarter notes, and eighth notes work. So, applying time to the progression is the next step. So, we played the A chord twice, but the first thing we're gonna look at now is we're gonna learn about whole notes. A whole note is four beats. So as you can see, we have four, four time here, and we have a BPM marker of 73 beats per minute. Um, now, without putting the metronome on, we're gonna get into the metronome in a minute, the goal here will be for you to just count out loud four beats. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Then to the D, back to the A. So your main objective here is to make the changes in time. So you have four beats to get to the next chord, and that gives you plenty of time to get set up for that next chord. Now, of course, you want to hold it as long as you can, but in the beginning, you're gonna probably have to get out of that chord and into the next one, and that's totally okay. So that's what whole notes look like. Now we're gonna look at half notes. Half notes are gonna be two beats, worth two beats, so for each measure, we're gonna have two of those. So now we're gonna be playing on the one and three, so this is gonna be a little quicker. Now I'm just counting out loud. One, two, three, four, 
One, two, three, four. Now I go to the D. Got to get back to the A. Now the next step will be to do the quarter notes. Quarter notes are going to be on every beat. So as, as I'm counting, I'm going to be playing on every beat. And that's going to sound like this. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, two, three, four. Those are chord notes. Now, the next is eighth notes. Now, for eighth notes, we're going to count one and two and three and four and. And that's going to sound something like this. One and two and three and four and two and three and four and D two and three and four and back day one and two and three and four and and that's as far as we're gonna go uh, with respect to rhythm you have triplets you have sixteenth notes but for right now if we can get up to there that would be great. Now that we understand how to count, we're probably not counting in time. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to have something to keep us accountable. And that is going to be our trusty metronome. Now the metronome I like to use is Metronome Pro. And that kind of looks like this. I'm going to pull it up on my iPad so you can see it. Something like that. Very, very cool app. Now the goal for this song will be 73 beats per minute. So if I play that, a little loud. That's 73 beats per minute. So if I was to do the whole notes, it's going to sound like this. This is the first goal. So you're going to go through all of the different rhythmic increments until you get to eighth notes because that's what the song is doing. So starting with whole notes, one, I'm going to turn up a little bit here. One, two, three, four. One, to the D. Back to the A. Now I'm going to do the half notes. Two, three. Quarter notes. Now you're going to want to also do this, let me turn this off, you're going to also want to do that of course with the verse chords and that's going to be a little bit more challenging but that's why I did it like this. So we start with whole notes, we go to half notes, quarter notes and eighth notes. I'm going to want you to do this over each of these different chord progressions, one and two, which will correspond to the chorus and the verse of the song. Next thing we're going to do, the next part of the lesson, is discuss listening to the song and learning how to count out loud with the song, learning how to play along with the song. But in the beginning, it's probably going to be better for you to turn the metronome. The metronome is at 73 beats per minute. Maybe bring it down to 50 to start. And if you can get it there, slowly increase the speed. Okay, now that we can play the chords for the tune, and we have a handle on the timing a little bit, and we can make the changes. Now is where the rubber meets the road. Now we have to listen to the song, be able to count with the song, and play along with the song. So right now, here it is. Got the tune pulled up. So this might sound silly, but it's not as easy as it seems. And that is learning how to count with the recording. So you really have to listen for where the downbeat comes. In other words, the first beat of the first measure of the tune. And in this tune, there's a pickup. So the pickup sounds something like this. One. So you have like, you have that little snare intro, and that's where the one starts. Here we go. Just a little closer to the mic. One, two, three, four. One, two, 
three, four, one, two, three, four. Now the chorus comes in. Okay, so we have a total of four bars of the A chord before we come in with the chorus, and there's another four bars of the A chord. So let's try that one more time. Now we're gonna count, so we were, we were counting uh, straight quarter notes. Now let's try and do the eighth notes because that will be the goal for what we wanna play along with. Now when you start playing along with the recording, it's always good to just try and get through it doing, doing whole note rhythms. Uh, now we're gonna try and count some eighth notes. Here we go. One, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four. One, and two, and three, and four, and chorus, two. So that kind of gives us the breakdown. So finding the one is the most important thing. And then if you're not used to counting with music, practicing counting with the music all the time is really, really helpful. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this up a little bit. Audio quality's not that good because I'm playing on my iPad. Um, but I am going to play along with it now. So now I'm gonna play, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna start by just playing straight quarter notes with the song. Then I'm gonna go into the eighth notes, and that's kind of the goal. Now, if you look at the screen, the song, I'm just gonna pull up the song right now. So there's the tune. So as you notice, um, there's like this little accent sign that is on the and. In other words, one and, and that and is gonna be played a little bit louder, and that's what the accent looks like right there. So when you play that, that means that the and is gonna be a little louder. So you're gonna play that one and two and three and four and. So on the beats, you're just playing the bottom strings. And then um, on the ands, you're playing almost all the strings, but you're playing them a little harder. In other words, the accent means you're playing it with a little bit more uh, power. So here we go, let's try this. So I'm gonna start with quarter notes, just straight quarter notes, and then I'm gonna go into the eighth notes. But I recommend you starting with whole notes. In other words, it's kind of like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, quarter notes. Eighth notes, one and two and three and four. Now what the and two and three. Now that's with the accent. starts over and then the whole tune will just cycle and repeat so I highly recommend um, that's how you want to practice it starting with whole notes if you can get the changes move to the quarters move to the eights then try and get the accent and then when you can do all that and you can play along with it then turning off the recording simply playing with the metronome at, at 73 beats per minute and then trying to sing the song uh, that is the last step. And when you can play through the entire song, start to finish, and you can sing it, there's one song in the can. So that is Three Little Birds by Bob Marley. What to practice and expectations. Now in terms of practicing when you're getting started, I'd recommend 20 to 30 minutes a day, four to five days a week. If you put this much time in, you're gonna immediately see some results. And everybody learns at a different pace. So lots of times I get the question, well, am I learning at a normal pace? Am I learning faster than other people? Am I learning slower than other people? I hear that all the time. The bottom line is if you're enjoying yourself and you're having fun with it, that's the number one goal. Um, it, but if you do put in 20 to 30 minutes a day, uh, I think that you will be seeing some results pretty quickly. 
and slowly you can up that time as you get more comfortable. Now your fingers are going to definitely get some calluses and that's totally normal um, in the beginning. It's going to hurt a little bit and that's no big deal. Um, once you get the calluses you won't really feel it anymore and so that, those are a couple of things to get started. The other thing is what are you going to practice? You want to practice the songs. You want to build yourself a songbook, maybe go to Staples, get yourself a binder, get organized and get a songbook and start learning tunes. Because when you get together with other people and you play, guess what you're going to play? You're going to play songs. And it's a great way to get started. And once you can learn some tunes, you can sing some tunes, then you go a little deeper. You learn some scales, you get into it, you learn more about music theory. But the bottom line is in the beginning is to just have fun, play stuff that you like, and if it, the stuff that you like is too complicated, you know, try and play some stuff that is accessible at least so you know that what you're doing sounds like it's supposed to. So thank you so much for visiting me at guitarreferenceguide.com. I hope this was very helpful and have a great day.